Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to finish up this amortization table with some conditional formatting. Okay, so I think we're done with the real hard stuff for this amortization table, but now I want to clean it up even more so that the user doesn't even see these zeroed out rows. Now, to exaggerate um, what we're going to do here, I really want to extend this amortization table. So let me go ahead and zoom out a bit on it. And I'm going to go ahead and take these ladder cells here from the end of the row. And I'm going to go ahead and autofill these all the way down. And I'm going to head all the way to row, well, I don't want to go that far. I'll go down to like row 400 or so. Because if somebody was doing this for a 30 year mortgage, that would require um, easily 360 rows. So let's go ahead and make sure we accommodate even a bigger size loan. So this is much bigger now. And so that this, so that my totals are going to be accurate, I do need to fix some of these. Instead of max D21, I'll do max D400. Sum J21, I'll sum all the way down J400. Instead of G21, G400. So those are all more updated. Now for the conditional formatting. And there's several rules that we might use here. Let's start off with, and it doesn't matter which row we start with. Um, I'll show you why in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and click on payment, one of my payment cells. Because this is one of the cells that I'm going to be using in order to hide some of these others. Because if a payment is a number greater than zero, then it must be a legitimate row that I want to display. But if a payment is less than one or zero, then it's something that I want to hide. So it's going to be a great tool for using conditional formatting. Um, I'll click on the first one. Um, all right, so conditional formatting. I'm going to create a new rule using a formula to determine which cells to format. Now the formula I'm going to end up using to start off with is I want to blank things out. So always start a formula or a function with an equal sign. And basically, I'm going to look at, in this case, D2. Now, I don't want to keep the number 2 absolute. So I'm going to use my F4 key. And I want to do an absolute column, but a relative row, because I want to be able to look at the, at the, the D column in different rows. So if D2 is, let's say, less than 1, then I'm going to have something happen. I'm going to change the formatting so that the, the font color is going to be white, white on white. And uh, actually, that should be enough for now. So let me go ahead and just click OK. I'm going to click OK. That's not exactly doing anything for me. Of course, we can't really tell here. But if I go in as a second step, conditional formatting, manage my rules, instead of just applying this to D2, I'm going to apply it to the range D2 colon L400. L, of course, being my ending column, uh, my ending balance column. And of course, 400 is where it ends up. And I'll do that as absolute as well. And I'm going to click Apply and click OK and check that out. All of those rows are blank. And if I change this to 20 months, it stops at 16. Why does it stop at 16? Don't forget, I'm making an extra payment in there of $100. If I had no extra payment, this would go out to 20. And so I've blanked out all of those cells, hidden them really, just with white text on a white background. OK. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to highlight the current month. Now, of course, this loan starts on February 5th, 2019. So the current month isn't on there. By the way, I'm recording this on December of 2018. So I'm going to change my payment start date to 8-8-18. So the payments start in August. Now I want to highlight the current row. So for us, it's going to be, basically, I want to be highlighting row number five. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on my first date. And I'm going to do a conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine. And now I'm going to type a formula in here. This one is going to be a little bit more complicated looking, though, because I'm going to be using an AND function. 
Now, an AND function requires that two arguments or two parameters be true, two tests. Excuse me. So I'm inside of the opening and closing parentheses. And the two things that I want to check for are the month of cell E2. And let me, of course, make that so it's a absolute column relative row. I want the month of E2 to be equal to the month of today. So the today function is a simple function with no arguments. If the month of E2 is equal to the month of today, it must be the current month, comma. But an AND function needs both things to be true. And for the right row to be selected, not only do I need to know that the month matches today's month, I need to know that the year matches. So the year of E2, make an absolute column relative row, is equal to the year of today opening and closing parentheses. And that should match it up. So if the month of E2 is equal to today's month, and if the year of E2 is equal to today's year, it must be that row. The formatting I'm going to use is I'll go to my um, fill, and I'll set the background to a uh, light yellow. I'm going to click OK. Oh, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. Oh, I must be missing a parentheses, so let me uh, make sure I've got that. Another closing parentheses. And too many arguments. Ah, I think I see it right in here. There should be a closing parentheses right there. So let's double check this. The month of E2, E2 is in parentheses, is equal to the month of today. Um, today function is inside its own set of parentheses. The year of E2 in parentheses is equal to the year of today. Today is in its own parentheses. And I don't think, and this one closes off and. I think that's right. So now I'll click OK. I'm going to head back to conditional formatting, manage my rules. I'm going to look at this one. I'm sorry, the one right up on top. And I'm going to apply colon L400 which is the complete range that I've got. I'm going to go ahead and apply, click OK, and we can see that this, the row for December is highlighted. Actually, it probably would have been nice to do that to D. So conditional formatting, manage rules. Instead of applying that from E, I will apply it from D. D2 to L400, apply, OK. There we go. Let's see if we can notice this happening. Of course, it's always going to be December of 2018 that highlights, because that's the current month. But let me go ahead and change the payment start date to 1-1-18. And we can see the current month is now here on month 12. And I could change this to 2-2-2017. Now I don't even see the highlighting, but if the loan was longer, 30 months, there we go. There's my December row highlighted. So that's a little bit of conditional formatting to hide the extraneous rows and to highlight the current month.